This is Morning Express. It's time for us to go to the newsroom. And, uh, well, in the newsroom, what we look at is some of the big stories that have been covered, how we have covered them, and whether we, as the watchdog of the people, members of the 4th of State, have done a good job, and if there are areas we can improve and possibly do a better job next time. And also project and see on some of the stories, how do we follow them up and are we dropping the ball? I'll go straight to introducing the panel. To my extreme left, we have Wenda Kilemi, who is a lecturer at the University of Nairobi in the Communications Department. Thank, Thank you for, for joining me. us. We have uh, Paul Wafula, who is a business editor with us here at the Standard Group, Karibu Sana. And last but not least, we have David Ohito, who is the digital editor also here at the Standard Group. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. And uh, like Ohito has pointed out, today we would fail in the two-thirds gender rule. <laughs> Miserably. <laughs> but it is not intentional. I will make it very clear. I had invited uh, several ladies, but, uh, well, they're not able to come. Uh, but uh, yes, it has not been intentional. But anyway, let's start off with, with, of course, what we've been talking about and has hit the headlines all the way from Friday. And I'll start with you, David Ohito, and this is in regards to the Al-Shabaab attack that took place in uh, Somalia. In terms of how, how much info we've been able to get out. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, it's really been a very sad moment for, for the country as a whole and also a very difficult moment for editors uh, and journalists trying to cover this story. Uh, but it brings to fore the fact that um, uh, terror threats remain alive and it's still a global challenge. Um, I have been at the center of that story trying to mine information, trying to get the story done in the best way possible and trying to navigate the big challenge between national security and information which will not uh, in any way favor um, enemies of Kenya. Uh, very difficult terrain to na navigate. And as you have seen or may have seen, not even in the international media have been able with their resources to get to the scene of the attack and get us the story really from what is called in military terms the defense position. So a very tricky thing. But um, uh, I've also had lots of interviews with experts, you know, retired generals, serving generals, and they say KDF was very lucky we have survivors. The amount of force that was used in tho by those suicide bombers, the vehicle bomb, improvised explosive devices, is such a devastating impact. And of course, they, they meant to have collateral damage. I mean, of absolute it, uh, annihilation of the whole country. Yes, in fact, uh, the generals are still wondering how come we still have survivors in this camp because the sheer force of one explosion has a very huge impact up to about 250 200. meters mm -hmm. uh, around. And uh, how the survivors uh, managed to escape is still a mystery in itself. Mm. But there are also positive stories that at least uh, they've flown back some of the survivors. Uh, the latest report we had was that uh, one of the soldiers was found actually alive at the exact scene of the explosion. Right, amongst other dead bodies. After three, four days mm. of survival. That's a very strong gentleman. Mm. Okay, I'll come to you, Mwendakilemi, and maybe given the terrain that we have to uh, adjust to, with the terror attacks that we have. Uh, there's a fine line between giving a story and also exposing the country to matters of national security. When it comes to training journalists now, do we need to be very sensitive to incorporate and ensure that the journalists that we have are not so, for want of a better word, trigger happy to just get information out, but at the same time you're sensitive to um, national security? Y yes, we do. We need to train our journalists to know that this information could be of benefits to the enemy when it comes to dealing with uh, reporting on us in war. But at the same time, we also need to recognize that the government will take all steps it can to make sure that any information it, it deems not necessary to be published to the public does not get out there. So that will automatically be covered by the government. Um, when it comes to this coverage of what happened in, uh, in Somalia, it's good to remember that we are at war. Uh, uh, I think for the last few months, maybe we forgot we are at war. When we're dealing with this issue of al-Shabaab, we're talking about them within the country. We're not been talking about what's happening outside the country in mm. Somalia. And we have been at war for a very long time. And unfortunately, these are the casualties of war once in a while. Um, we live in a world where you can be at war, but life goes on. 
for the rest of the population. So issues like this help us remember that people are dying to protect us here in Kenya. And uh, debates have been going on whether we should be in Somalia or not. Mm -hmm. um, issues like this help us have that debate and help us remember that people are sacrificing their lives for the benefit of the rest of us. Um, so I, I hope that the media now can cover more what's going on in Somalia. The progress the country has done in securing um, uh, the country. Um, the progress that Somalia itself is doing in terms of going inch by inch to become more democratic. Yesterday I saw a story about how they're building estates for the first time in Mogadishu, really, really huge estates. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the benefits of us being there. And we need to talk about the war that's going on and the people that are fighting for us in Somalia. Okay, yeah. Paul, uh, maybe the challenge that there has been in uh, getting information, because at this point in time, I mean, it's only as, uh, from what we are, the information we're getting, it's only as, yes, as by yesterday that uh, the Kenyan authorities were able to get you know, access into the camp. But now, looking at it from a journalistic point of view, the challenge of getting information out, yet there are families who are waiting, but really the only, the, the only person we can depend on right now, or the only institution, is the government, really. I think I'll, I'll, I'll agree with my uh, colleagues here. Um, you see, in this kind of a situation, it becomes uh, quite a tricky situation. Mm. Uh, when you're looking at, on one end, providing uh, this information to the families and to, to the Kenyans at large who really want uh, to know what really went down in Somalia. At the same time, uh, not uh, looking as if you are, you know, you are trumpeting the, the, the visions or the, the, the goals of the enemy. Okay. Uh, but uh, as a journalist, personally, these are my views. I always sit with the, with the, with the people who, who I call the voiceless, the people who have nobody else to speak for them. And for me, these are the families, yeah, at this point in time. Uh, for me, as national interest, of, of course, we'll, we'll, we'll be very critical in the stories we do, but these are people, these are human beings. I, I find it quite, quite interesting that even at this t point in time, we do not know the number of people who have actually died. That is an official number from, from the government. Uh, we, we do not actually have the pictures of these people yet at this point in time. For me, these are national heroes. Um, you might talk about, you know, uh, national security, but these are somebody's uh, husband, you know, this is somebody's father. You know, these are the people we should be celebrating right now. We need to know the people who are really doing us, I, I mean, who, who, who are really fighting for this country. Mm. These are the people we should be focusing on right now. And the other things will come, but I think we need to also draw the line and come back a bit and realize that we are dealing with uh, human beings that are not just boots and guns. And, and, and they have feelings too. You can imagine coming all the way from Somalia, fighting for six months, and, and nobody even knows you are there. You know, putting your life right at the center mm -hmm. of, 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 of the attacks. Um, I would I, I I I prefer a situation whereby we have a, a balance that even as, 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 as we protect I mean, and, 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 and look at the issues of national security, we also need to recognize the people who are, who are actually putting out this service. 